Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. For a little while this morning, preach from the subject, it was prayer that saved my life. I'm going to say that again. It was prayer that saved my life. Can you just peek over to the other side of the room and announce it was prayer that saved my life. Let the folk over here look over here and say, it was prayer that saved my life. Ha! This season, all that is going on in our country. Lord, I, I labored. I had Bishop, I had something else I was looking at, but I kept, and I told my wife, I kept coming back to this issue. Because prayer, we don't realize the season that we and God is calling us in this season of prayer. We need prayer not only for ourselves, but for our nation, but we need God to move. All right. See, in, in our churches, we have somewhat forgotten what it takes. I'm old school. I'm, I'm from the old way where I grew up and we had all night prayer. We, we had what we call shut-in. Uh, where we would go in on Friday night. We would, my mother wouldn't even let me take a pillow. No, because we're not going to sleep because we need God to move on our behalf. So I grew up in a time where it was prayer all the time. We came to church 8 o'clock, pray. We're going to pray during the service. Even now, it takes us our morning worship. We spend an hour praying. We get maybe 15 minutes of worship and praise, but we pray for a whole hour during our morning worship. Friday night at the choir rehearsal, we would pray for one and two hours. So the foundation of the church is built on prayer. This is how God talks to us, but this is also how God moves in us. And if we don't capitalize on this prayer, we're going to miss God. See, we, we, we want to preach, we want to do all these things, but we don't have a prayer life. All right, there was a saying that says, little prayer, little power. A lot of prayer. It's a lot. It, it's the foundation of who we are and we find out now because we have crisis we fail because we don't know we, we've forgotten that it's going to take something and it's going to take us talking to God to give that's what that song such a sudden way lead me and God it's going to take us talking to God and listening to his voice for him to lead us we find here that the crisis that Jesus told Peter he was going, he says, Peter, I'm praying for you. Yeah. Thank you Lord. He says, the, the, the enemy desires to sift you as sweet. But he says, I'm praying. We find Peter, there's a dynamic here. That Peter, I, I love. I know preachers preach from Paul and, 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 and others, but I like Peter Bishop because here it is, when, G, when Jesus asked, who do men say I am? It was Peter that jumped in and says, thou art the Christ. 
that there was something, it says, uh, uh, flesh and blood, the blood ain't revealed that to you. So something in you that you see in me, it was Peter. It was Peter. That, 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 that here is the dynamic. He, he says, Peter, you're the rock. You're, upon this rock, when I build my church. It's amazing that, that Peter was the one who was with Jesus that says, Lord, I see you walking on water. If you bid me to come, I don't see any recorded of any other disciples asking God, Lord, I see what you do, but because I'm connected to you, I want to do what you do. It was Peter who says, Lord, bid me to come to you. The Lord saw something in Peter that he wants to see in us. He wants to see the desire to touch him. To be used by him. See, but Peter had some issues that God had to deal with. And when crisis comes, see, we misinterpret crisis as catastrophe. But crisis is nothing but a process to get us where to where God wants us. See, Peter had some things, sis, that he needed God to work out in. Yeah, yeah, Peter was the one. He pulled out the blade, you know, when, when, when it came to, to get Jesus. It was, it was Peter. Yeah. They cut the ear off. The Lord says, hold up. Hold up. And I read something in this, bro. Jesus had to put the ear back on. Because if he had not, Peter would have been disconnected from ministry. Okay, all right, let me. In that time, it was a crime to. It was a crime to cut off a soldier's ear. So God had to do something to salvage his life. Of us today. Let, me, let me bring this into context. How many of us know that we've been chosen by God, but know that we need some work done in us? He says, Peter, I got to save you from you destroying you so you can get connected to your ministry. How many of us today are so much so glad that God reached out and saved us when we were about to make some mistakes? All right. All right, that's me. See, see God chooses us. We ain't, we ain't all that we need to be, but God uses this process to get us to where he wants us to be. And all, all the flaws that Peter had, God says, I still choose you. Young folk, don't ever, don't ever think that uh, there's, this, there's this thing uh, of called mental illness, mental health that we have in society where some folk don't believe who they are and what they are and what they're supposed to be. And that's going to leak over into the church. We got folk in the church, Bishop. I don't know what I'm called to do. Who always been. No, God said, I want to use this as a process to get you to where I want you. There's some stuff in us that God has to deal with so that we can be used by Him. There's some stuff in us that God got to deal with in order. See, we want to be anointed and still angry. We want to be anointed and still preach. And have an attitude. No, no, see, the way that worship works is God is looking for a clean vessel that can stand in so he can use us as he pleases. I was looking at that mission. I was looking at the scripture on last night, Romans chapter 7. Paul says, there's some things in my flesh things when I would do good. There's some things that keep pulling me. The things that I should do, I don't do those things. He 
gets down to it says, oh wretched man, that I am, who shall, who shall deliver? He says, and that next, that last, he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ. See, what I want to, God says this, I want to get connected to you so that I can use. A lesson we find that Jesus says, Peter, Satan wants to sift you. Yes, he does. That's right. Bishop, that's God has a way of using the things that the devil wants to destroy us uh -huh. to help us. That's right. Oh, all right, let me talk to somebody. See, we, we think that Christ is, is there to take us out, bro. But God knows how to use the things that we're in to pull us out and deliver us. There's this process of sifting. See, I, I, I looked this up, bro. And sifting is a process that we need to understand. Sifting, when they sift, when we, they do this, Bishop, they, they, they take it. It's not in its final form, but they gotta take the seed and beat it. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 that. Why? When you know you have something precious, do you beat it? It's to get the things, the impurities that's connected to it. It's gotta get it out. It's a process called threshing. See, we gotta get to a point where we stop getting mad at folk walking out of our life. Oh, okay, I didn't get it. We were just shouting about 15 minutes ago. I guess we didn't sit on See, we want to try to stay connected to things that God wants to disconnect from us. Oh, all right. See, we, what, what happens, bro? See, God is saying no, but our flesh is saying no. I gotta have it. I gotta want that person. They, I want that person. They nice. They look good. No. But something I'm finding out that when God steps in, there's gonna be some disconnections. Right. Sometimes God wants us all alone so He can pour into us. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we look at isolation and oh no 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 I'm alone. No no. Sometimes God wants us by ourselves so that He can talk directly to us. Right. There ain't no static on the line. See, when you got other things and other folk in their opinions, it goes against what God wants your assignment to be. Yeah. We had to be exposed. There were some things, although Peter was chosen, he still denied Christ because of his fear. All oh, right. Listen, they were just, we were just, we were just. We were just shouting. Right. But when we understand what God is doing, see, God is allowing some things to happen so that we can hear him clearly. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't need no chaff connected because that, 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 that's not what God is looking for. See, as long as certain things are connected to us, God won't be able to use us. Right. First process. Sifting is to beat and to break. Break all of those fears. Breaking all of those attitudes. Oh, have, you, have you realized that's what, that's what Peter was? He says when he cut off the he says, Peter, I gotta deal with that. I gotta deal with those things that's lingering because you won't be a true warrior if these things are still lingering in your life. So that's another process. Harrowing. That's when the harvester throws up everything in the air and what's connected gets disconnected. Let me, let me stay right there for a moment. See, bro, what I'm finding out, God wants us in a place that he can, he can, he can disconnect those impurities that are in our life. That's what we need. Right. Jesus says, he says, hold up, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for your good. See, when we start understanding trouble comes not to hurt, but to expose and allow God to heal. 
Jesus said to Peter, I'm praying for you. When I look at this lesson, this, this wasn't just any ordinary person. He was letting Peter know, I am with you. All right. No, y'all didn't, y'all didn't, y'all didn't capture this. Like, let me say it again. See, when you know that God is connected to you and got your back, that's what he was telling Peter. I know that the enemy's going to come, but not the Lord. See, when you know that God is on your side and he ain't going to let you fall. See, I know some things are bothering us, but God is letting us know this morning, I am with you. You. Peter, don't fret and don't fear because I, the Lord, got your back. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God wants to let us know I got your back. You may be hurting right now, you may be suffering right now, but I hear God says, I got your back. Faith. That's why Paul can say in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, he says, when he was getting whipped up and thrown in this, he said, My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. That means that as long as I'm connected to you, you ain't going to fail. See, that's what we think that we are in this by ourselves. But God is letting us know, I got you. I got you. My grace. My grace. My ability. My favor. is all you need. God 
wants to deliver, but we stop. God says, come on. That's what was, that's what Peter had to learn. When you, when you walk in by faith and you stop and start leaning on your own decisions, you're going to start sinking. I remember the story of walking in water. Peter had to have that experience to know that I got to stay connected to Christ. When I'm walking, I can't afford to take my eyes off of God. That's where we are. We start growing. We start moving. And then we want to do things our own way. God says you're going to sink. But as long as you stay connected. So let's jump. We borrow Peter. The waves started coming. Fear started taking in. But when he reached out his hands, he was in the water. And this is what I, I bishop, I couldn't rest last night. I got up, went to bed at two. I got this bolt of energy. I says, Lord, I gotta go to Baltimore. I don't want to leave. If I leave too, too late from Fredericksburg, I would have been just getting here. But the Lord kept me up. He shared with me, bitch. I had a whole nother message. He says, he whispered, he says, I want the people to know to stop drowning in sorrow. Stop drowning in disappointment. Stop drowning in frustration. All you need to do is what Peter from he says, Lord, I lift my hands. I need you to help me. Stop drowning. Stop drowning. Lift 
lift up your hands. Lift up your eyes. Lift your hands. And say, I'm trapped. I'm losing my life. I don't know what to do. But please, Lord, I'm your servant. I'm your child. Please, Lord, you say.
can't we just worship him? Just, come on, come on to worship. Come on, in. come on. The fruit of the lips, come on, give God. Come on to give God. Give them all. Share all with the Lord. This is it. I give it to you. I give it. I need you to pull me up. Carry me. Pull me up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. What a word. Come on, extend your hand this way. We want God to pour back into the man of God what he poured out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. portion of the service praise the Lord come on tell God thank you one more time hallelujah glory to God what a word what a word I heard a word preached once whenever I see Elder Brockington he just triggers my mind back to those New Year's revivals and I, I look at him preaching I don't know if I see Overseer Brockington Moore or Bishop I was looking for him to holler. I, I got a fax. I got a fax. Praise the Lord. But we certainly thank God for the word that went forth in this house this morning. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to turn it over into the hands of our pastor, Bishop Richardson. Come on, put your hands together again. Hallelujah. As he will lead us into the next portion of the service, we understand that there is a uh, ordination portion that we will be having uh, two candidates for the diaconate, praise him that will receive the laying on of hands by the presbyter receive Bishop Richardson praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody what a word what a word what a word I said in my spirit a chip up the old block of his dad, Bishop Brockington, that he's some kind of a preacher, and we certainly have heard a demonstration. Praise the Lord. But before we set that up, let's see, somebody might want prayer. We, uh, we, we don't want to get ahead of, of that. And we believe, I came up in the old school also, that after a word had been preached, the next thing on the agenda is to find out if anybody want to be saved. Because the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel is for the saving of souls. World gonna ever be changed if we be changed through the preaching of the gospel. Peter was the one that had the key, and the other rock in the chest. Peter had the lies in it. Shift them in heaven, shift them like wheat. Sorry, Peter. But Jesus to Peter, thou upon this rock. Build the church. Keep the 
don't know how many years ago, but that was five, three years ago. And I said, girl, this is your spot. She said, no, I get you out. So, you don't get no doctor's degree without being uh, smart. I, 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 that, that, that's not really a, a, the appropriate word to you, but you are you are educated, you are an achiever when you get a doctor's degree. Praise the Lord. No, I just want to give God all the praise, give God all the glory. I am, I don't know, I'm just shocked whether y'all know it or not, but I couldn't take this home with me because God, he has, has been so good, yeah. so good. Y'all yeah. can't even imagine it. Well, y'all probably can, but just two of the four years has been completely through COVID. And when the when the pastor was preaching and he kept saying, you just had to lean on God. And I just had to lean and depend on him. And even Denise just coming up, just saying, my, just, just be happy, and I am, but I tell you, y'all just don't, I mean, it was at one point where you, you can do all the coursework, and Bishop, I was able to do the coursework, but before you can go into the dissertation phase, you had to take what they call the comprehensive exam. And I tell you, God grew my faith because I kept saying, I was calling Denise, calling my mom-in-law. I said, y'all just got to pray for me. And I said, if only my bishop could just lay hands on me, I will be all right. But the church wasn't open. Why nobody laying hands. And God just grew. I grew up in this process. My faith but God had a ram in a bush. He had a ram in a bush. I went to my job. God cleared the entire fourth floor. I didn't know this lady. I didn't know her other than being a manager. But she looked at me and she was like, Lisa, God got you. And then she laid hands on me.
Um, and then uh, that will be a charge. That will be a charge said to the uh, the deacon, and uh, that will be prayed for, uh, and the church will be presented uh, to you. Uh, uh, deacon Anthony Plummer. At the end of it, of this session, it, and Deacon Marvin Johnson would be presented to you as ordained deacon, and you would receive them. At the end of it, but there will be a few questions and so forth. Um, there, I think this gentleman Nelson will have some printout, and all you have to do is. Yes, I will do by the help of God or whichever way it is. I'm not I'm not sure how you going through the whole process, but normally it is a printout and you simply just ask I will. Remember when you got married? When they <laughs> and you, and this will do. Uh, God be my help. It's just a simple question like that. So all you gotta do is listen to what the question is. I don't know how many questions, but whatever it is. Praise the Lord, you know, look at that sister but that one. Praise the Lord, thank you, Lord. Stand there, I'm good to see you. I'm Minister Deborah Lee. Praise the Lord, thank you, see you. Praise the Lord, we, we've had a Samson of a time. I, I, I was speaking to one of my a uh, relative from uh, Alabama, by the way, of Central Florida, and, and um, Leola Robertson, a remarkable individual, uh, Sister Warren, I wish you could have met her. I wish I had met her earlier when we were down there. She's a remarkable lady. Uh, she got married. She was at my, my, my dad and my mother's wedding. She knows my family quite well. We were just a brother. And so we find out she married a, a, a gentleman. He was only one child, and he wanted a lot of children. She said, I gave him 10. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if, 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 if y'all have to leave, we're not going to hold y'all over. But uh, let me finish this little part of the statement, then we, uh, we can. Uh, Officially, let you all go. Uh, uh, just make sure that whatever little love gift they gave you, make sure you got that. But uh, the remarkable thing about Leola, she had 10 children, and all 10 of her children were high school graduates. All of them had their PhDs, all of them had their master's degree. I said to Leola, I said, you really set the bar as high for your children. She said, yeah, I finished school, high school at 16. I went to Alabama State, I went to Tuskegee, and I went to Florida State. And while your parents said they would get married young, I followed my education. And she still have a good, sound mind. 99 years old, and yeah, praise the Lord. I was saying to her daughter, I said, see like there could be something written up on her. Uh, you know, being in a rural side, town like that, being African American, and her father, and the first I knew, was the first black in that area that had his master's degree, uh, Mr. T. Wood T. We usually live across the creek from him. But anyway, that was a remarkable story I talked to her last night. And uh, she said that uh, she set the bar very high for her children. The 10 children, all PhD, all master's degree, and phenomenal. I think six of them still live in she outlived the other because she was 99. All right, what we're going to do right now, we're going to let uh, Ella uh, Barker to come back and have the final word. And, and then uh, as soon as Ella Nelson arrived, we would move on 
and with a song and, and scripture reading and so forth, and then we would put it in his hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you too. <laughs> Hey, 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 and that message is now that the people uh, normally uh, give the offering on the way out. But uh, I don't know how long that's going to last. I've been, it been kind of running through my head all the time. I don't know if that's any better than to bring them up here. Now, can I say this psychologically? Uh, uh, psychologically, can I say this? If you let people give it when they go out, you're probably not going to get as much if they came up there. Do I have some agreement? You know why? Because when, when the things ain't going out, you, some of them probably ain't giving nothing. But if you ask to come up there, you're going to see who come up there. See, you always got to be thinking. I tell people on my job, because I'm always a thinker. And a thinker, <laughs> thinker is thinking. If you say, just give the offer on your way out, it's a good chance some of them going out without giving anything. And, and the reason why you can't see it because they're in the back. See. But you say, you're about to bring the offer on us, you say, right on, you can see what they're giving. <laughs> Not how much they're giving, but you can see that they made the way up. So we may change that. We may change that. So we always got to keep thinking. All right, let's. Let's uh, um, you that have came to have an offering, brethren, when you all received this offering, praise the Lord. And let me say this too while they're coming. Uh, corona is still around. COVID-19 is still around. And that means that we're not doing a whole lot of hugging and all that kind of stuff now. See, you know, Business as usual, and Mr. Bell said, no more than simple. So, it's all right to greet one another. Uh, you know, your family is different, but uh, don't, don't think nobody is rejected. Uh, a hug and all that kind of stuff. But it does that we got to do things different now. We can't, can't be just hugging everybody now, throwing your arms all around, and so forth and so on. So, Please, man, please, sir. All right, everybody that uh, want to have an offering. Mm -hmm. We have to give an offering if you have one. You can give it down. Or you can come on and be in the back and take it if you. Yeah, I think that the sister Kanisha that put the announcement made concerning uh, the electronic giving, it was made. It was made, right? Okay, electronic uh, uh, you can. Give a five, give a five. Uh, I forgot who was that other fellow here, but oh, I said something. I said that was a laugh. But that's not. You know, I did not for me. I think the setup. Never know we have much trick. Tell Mr. Rockin' and I said thank you. Thank you so much. But, uh, I won't say a, a 
allow, allowing you to come, but to put his approval on Holy Ghost. I know Bishop Barker, the kind of man he is, that he's a black scholar man. So I'll say thank you, Lord. So I'll say thank you, Lord. So I'll say thank you, Lord. Elder Bobby, does it come to have a final word? So I'll say thank you, Lord. And then we'll wait a few minutes for Elder. So I'll say thank you, Lord. And then we'll go into our consecrated service of these deacons. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. I would be remiss. I thank God for the invitation I'm from the youth department. Thank you so much. Again, I would be remiss. I uh, honor my wife again this morning, Sister Lady Tamira Barkington. The love of my life. Praise him. Praise him. Amen. I thank her for her support and her prayers. I've been married. Uh, 22 years, going on 23, and I stopped counting, uh, it's just been just that good. I also want to thank my family, uh, the Ontario Sister Nicole Riddick, thank them for coming uh, with us. My son, Cooper, is here. We, we thank God, I mean, I, I think of this bishop as home, amen, and I thank uh, for the warm uh, reception. We got new Memorial Days, I tell you, bruh. Again, am I just... All right, that's all. Again, we thank God for being here. We ask that you continue uh, to pray for us and with us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. While we're waiting for District Elder Nelson, we're going to dismiss the service. Those that have to leave, I ask that you will stand all over the building. Praise the Lord. As we formally dismiss, we ask that you would remember CDC guidelines and what Bishop has reminded us of. We're not going to spend a lot of time greeting one another. Do a symbol. Give an air hug. Praise him. Amen. COVID is still on the rise. Praise him. So what we're going to do is we're going to dismiss. We're going to ask the ushers, praise the Lord, that they would be in place so that we are going out expeditiously. Praise the Lord in an orderly fashion. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for supping with us this morning. God, we thank you for the word that went forth, what you did in this service. Oh God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the anointing, the healing. Oh God, what took place in this atmosphere? Oh God, as we leave this place and never from your presence, God, continue to rest, rule, and abide. Oh God, cover us throughout the week. In Jesus' name, that we continue to walk in total victory that you have given us and it is now henceforth and forevermore oh god this we pray and we dismiss by saying amen praise the lord those that desire to stay we ask that you will stay in your seats praise the lord for the conclusion or the remaining portion of the service I'm going to ask the praise team to just assemble thank you lord so I say thank you, Lord. 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 I won't go.
With my hope. 
in it, praise the Lord, for each man in charge. And at this time, we, we're going to ask as we just begin this part of service, uh, my youngest, formerly you feel like giving us a good old congregate some uh, scripture read and prayer, and then we'll be ready to make the presentation. I, I, I was thinking about Sister Warren, song that it got to be her song, because I don't hear nobody else trying to sing this song. Let him in. I was <laughs> up to wonder. I can't remember all the words. And then, praise the Lord, let him in. Some song, uh, God is God, God on the hill, mountain, God on the whole universe. God is God. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to move right on this service. We said it's going to be short. It's going to be short. It's going to be short. Bishop, this is going said it's going to be short. Right the plum going to give us a song. And then someone will, he calls someone to lead us in prayer and uh, scripture be read. Praise the Lord. And we move. We put it in the hand of the presented, the skeleton. No. Praise everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hand and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We're still in the house of God, and God's a good God. He's a mighty God. Aren't you glad about Jesus? If you're glad about Jesus, clap your hand and help me sing this song. Praise the Lord. Just a little bit of song in mind. This is my real song. And this is for the cave because God is good all the time. And I haven't sing it in a while, but I'm going to sing it today. Thank the Lord for this ordination and my son and my mother, all of but God doing this thing. And I can say, God is a good God. Oh, Today, 
in the name of the Lord, you see me in that moment, in Jesus' name. Psalms 27. David song of confidence. And thus says the word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy, and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though and hope should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against, against me, and this will I be confident. One thing, at one thing, that, uh, uh, yeah, glory, one thing, yeah, whoa, I desire of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me and oh, and oh, and oh, and oh, and oh Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word I pray the Lord I'm going to get up the way this thing is getting good all over again we had a church this morning but we can have a church right now but God is in the building. When God is in the building, he's on charge. At this time, he's not going to get out the way. He, he did what he's supposed to do. We're going to turn his hand back to hand of Pastor Ella Nelson. He will turn it to you. He had the scripture already. We turn it back. Receive our pastor as they come forth to the front of the service. Now, Lord, thank you and praise God for it. In Jesus' name, receive him. Thank you, Lord, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Let me give you some. Put in this mask and off and put it back. Who would have thought 15, 20 years ago we'd be sitting in church wearing masks? I thought about men, you know, that we know have gone on to the Lord. Even Dr. Bell got out of here before this. Yes, he did. Dr. Bell was one man, no man, but Dr. Bell was praise the Lord. Because I remember I was up in uh, Chicago at his home court. But uh, Bishop O'Dear's right and all that. God got them out of here. Mother Belton, Deacon Belton. They didn't see this day. They didn't see this day. But uh, we are calling the kingdom such a time as this. We're going to move right on the service. And what we want to do now, we want the candidate that's going to be uh, consecrated to take their seat in. Afterwards, we will present them to uh, Mr. Gellar Nelson, these individuals that we have selected, and we'll present to him the uh, people to his ministry, and we wanted him to ordain them and to uh, consecrate them and give them their charge and operate, and, and, and he knows what to do. So where is the, we're gonna ask the two candidates, the two brothers, Deacon Marvin and Deacon Anthony Plummer, and their wives. <laughs>
he was a preacher by excellence. And one of the great ones, Stephen, of that group. And I'm not up here to elaborate, but um, to present these candidates to District Elder Nelson, and that he will further in uh, his service as far as consecrating them and word from the Bible concerning this, this service. Well, Father, by our name, a friend, from your foot in the God. I'm very honored, first lady to so we to see you. I wish I could have my old girl name and look at the police, but I guess with the mask, I made it even harder. <laughs> but thank you all for coming and being with us to this, to this service at this time. So, brothers and sisters, we will uh, uh, present the presenting of uh, these, uh, just these couple, Deacon Marvin, Johnson, and Sister Johnson, and also Deacon Anthony Plummer and Sister Plummer are standing here to be examined, and you will respond to the questions that this fellow does ask you, and he will charge you if you agree to serve in the capacity of people and people's responsibilities and serve your past as he charged you. At this time, receive Mr. Governor Nathaniel Duncan. Deacons were first appointed. 
disappointed in the church at Jerusalem and account of their appointment is given in the sixth chapter of the book of Acts of the apostles as follows. Acts chapter 6 verse 1 said, In those days were the number of the disciples were multiplied, and there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Pacorus, and Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. I also like to read from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 to 13. Likewise must the deacon be great, not double tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must the wives be great, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacon be the husband of one wife, ruling the children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Following the example of thus established by the first Christian church, with the advice and approval of the apostles, the brothers of that congregation, congregation have desired men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, chosen from among themselves to serve as deacons. Here we gather to formally install these two brothers as deacons. Deacon A. Morris, Deacon Plummer, into the office of Deacon. Let us pray. In thy great goodness, O Lord, make these thy servant to be deacons in thy church. Give them grace to be modest, humble, and constant in their ministry. Give them a ready, will to observe all spiritual discipline and with the testimony of a good conscience always before them may they continue stable and strong in the Lord. We're going to ask that the deacon and the wife would they please stand at this time. For as much as you have been selected to the office of a deacon in this church, 
and have declared your willingness to serve. I now ask you your assent of the following questions. Do you reaffirm your allegiance to Jesus Christ and his church? This part I do. I do. Do you accept the office of deacon in this church and promise faithfully to perform its duties? I do, the Lord be my help. I do, the Lord be my help. Do you promise to further the interests of the church to the best of your ability and to cooperate with the pastor? and members in promoting the harmonious and effective working of all its department. I do the Lord be my help. I do the Lord be my help. To the congregation, do you as members of this church acknowledge and receive these brothers as your deacon? Do you promise to yield to them that esteem, encouragement, and cooperation of which this office is worthy. If so, will you signify, signify by standing and uniting in your heart in the prayer of consecration? and sustainer of the universe. In the name of Jesus, who did come not to be ministered to, unto, but to minister, and who art the head of the church, set apart and consecrate these, thy servant to the office of deacon. Ensure them with heavenly wisdom, and in counsel they may deal wisely as those who have the mind of Christ. Give them the spirit of compassion for human needs and fill them with love and tender care for every soul for whom thou hast died. Strengthen and nourish their faith in thee and in the value of thy church that they may increase the faith of their fellow members and give grace unto us all that working together seeking to know and to do thy will we may greatly advance thy cause in this community to the glory of thy name. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Deacon Mars and Deacon Plummer. I charge you both before God and the Lord Jesus Christ by the virtue of your call to this office of deacon by this congregation and your satisfactory fulfillment of the requirement of deacon as found in this manual and in the Holy Scripture, 1 Timothy 3, 8 to 13, which we've already read, and the doctrine of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith International Incorporated, I, Mr. Gallo Nathaniel Nelson, do now install you as a deacon of the True Gospel Apostolic Faith Church congregation. God, may God bless you in these responsibilities and make you fruitful in all your service. May you be faithful stewards over these few things, that in the end you may be made rulers over many things. 
and may the church be prosperous and its great king that here Jesus Christ be honored by your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Bishop Arthur Richardson and the True Gospel Apostolic Fitness, I now present to you your two new deacons in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you. 